name is Vasant and I am an Ascadian faculty and uh, I teach biology. I actually train NEAT aspirants and I have been doing this for more than nine years and I'm very much experienced to, like, you know, uh, get a good result out of. And uh, today we are going to learn, okay, the continuation of whatever we saw in the last class with regards to how do organisms reproduce, okay? And I hope everybody is having a good time. Like, let's get a question, okay? Just allow me some time. I hope everybody can see the screen now. Okay. So today we're gonna to just continue the, whatever we have left from, and then we'll proceed towards, so the following content. So topics that we're that gonna to cover today will be the sexual reproduction in plants. That will be like in detail, like uh, before what happens before, and then what happens after. So those of them will be like, uh, will be like learned. So that's what is mentioned here as post fertilization event. So once after the fertilization happens, so what are the events that is going to take place that is going to modify the flower into the fruit and the seed and stuff. Okay, and then uh, basic uh, like you know explanation and then like you know in detail about the male reproductive system and a little brief about sexual reproduction in human being, which we have already seen here. Okay, so let's get into the problem. So we are talking about sexual reproduction in plants. So that's actually one of the most important role when it comes to evolution and also when it comes to, uh, like, you know, uh, in the process of, uh, like, you know, giving their young ones to the next generation and giving them all the characteristics that they require to survive the whole uh, environmental characteristics, okay? So it involves two gametes. One is the male gamete from the male reproductive part of the plant and the female gamete from the female reproductive part of the plant. So the male gamete will be like a present in the pollen grain, which will be produced from the stamen gland. Okay. And when it comes to the female reproductive part, they come from the female reproductive part, which is the ovule. Okay. So female reproductive part is the ovary and in which ovule will be present. So due to the process of pollination and the process of fertilization, okay, we can we have mentioned over here due to pollination. So and then uh, due to fertilization happens the seeds will be formed and the fruits will be grown. So this is what we are going to see in detail you know, with pictorial representations and stuff. Shall we get into the topic now? Yes. So here, we have already seen these pictures uh, briefly, but I'm going to explain them in detail. So this picture here represents the male reproductive part, which is the stamen. And this stamen consists of two segments called filament and anther. So filament is the structure that holds the anther in place so that it will facilitate the transfer of male gamete holding structure to the female reproductive structure. Okay, I hope you all understood the point. So the filament actually holds the anther in place. Now the anther contains many specialized tissues which develops to form pollen grains. So those pollen grains upon development will contain three cells. One, a very big pollen cell or we call it tube cell, okay? And another uh, regenerative, or we can say like reproductive cells. There are two sets of reproductive cells. They are called male gametes. So you have to remember in plants, in the pollen grain, it has two male gametes. So in this process, we are gonna learn something called double fertilization, and we will learn for which you need to remember that it actually contains two male gametes. Now, when we go to the pollen grain, your pollen grain is ready. Okay, that is there in the male reproductive chain. In the female reproductive part, it includes stigma, style, and ovary. They are together called carpel. So when you have the carpel in place, and then the stigma, the stamen is also in place, and it is it is a it is a property of or it is a process of reproduction. Then there should be one particular event which is which is going to help them. Okay, help the plant to undergo reproduction, which is called pollination P O L L I N A T I O N pollination so pollination we have we have actually studied about that in detail about the two different types like call you remember what are the pollinations that you are studying self pollination and cross pollination i really heard somebody saying that okay uh, so now the pollen grain when the stamen and the carpel of the same flower when they are going to undergo reproduction, same flower of the same plant, okay? 
So then the pollen grain that is transferred to the stigma of the same flower and the same plant, then it is called self-fertilization. 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 Which is same flower. Okay. Now, when it is going to be a different flower, of the different plants, then it is called cross fertilization. Okay. Different flower of different plants. Okay. This is called cross fertilization. So, such event of transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the female reproductive structure, which is the female reproductive structure. This process is called pollination. Okay. So, the pollination is done by several agents. It can be done by wind. It can be done by water. It can be done by animals, birds, insects. So, based on different types, they are named differently. Okay. So now, when the stigma is actually uh, consists of a sticky substance, so the pollen grain gets literally stuck on that. It will be nutritious in nature. So you all have studied about osmosis process in the pro in the chapter of fundamental units of life, okay, ninth standard. In that, when the concentration of the materials are going to be higher, okay, inside, okay, the movement of water molecules will be happening from outside to inside. So that is called endosmosis. So the pollen grain will be having highly dissolved substances. So as a result of which the, the soluble, the soluted substance, the soluble substance or uh, the solution which is actually present on the stigma will enter inside and in the pollen grain and that results in protrusion of the tube cell. Okay, tube cell. This tube cell protrusion will be led by the tube nucleus, the tube nucleus. The tube nucleus literally directs the formation of tube. So where does it take? It actually takes the, the tube formation till the region of the micropylar end. I repeat, micropylar end. Micropylar end is actually the lowermost or the open region of the uh, ov 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 ovule. Okay. Now, in this, in this stage, the tube nucleus will be followed by two male gametes. So, these two male gametes will be following the tube nucleus, which will lead the uh, tube formation to the micropylar. So, once after the tube nucleus is formed, okay, uh, or sorry, directed, and then the male gametes reach the micropylar end, it actually results in the process of fertilization. How does it do? The first male nucleus will be fusing with the egg cell. So we are going to see that in the next slide in detail with a zoom picture. Okay. So this is the ovule in detail, like you know, like a big large picture. So this is the ovule over here, okay, all together. And this cell is the female gamete. So it is all mentioned over here. This is the female gamete. In this female gamete, one of the male gamete, you can see one of the male gamete from here will be going and it will be fertilizing the, the egg. Okay, the female gamete. So that results in formation of zygote. Okay, this is the zygote. And the second gamete will be fusing with the polar nuclear. See, there are two male gametes, and these two male gametes, one of them fuses with the one of them fuses with the female gamete, and another one fuses with the polar nuclear. So how many fertilization takes place? So we all studied in eight standard itself under the chapter reproduction where what is fertilization? Fertilization is fusion of gametes and formation of zygote, which will result in formation of zygote. Here, the zygote have also formed and there were two male gametes involved because in the initial stage, the embryo, whatever is going to be formed from the zygote will require some additional nutrition to support the growth of the rat radical. Okay, radical. So radical is the primitive part of the root. So now we'll, we'll we'll see that when the when we see the embryo part. Okay, so here you can see the zygote have developed into embryo over here, and the polar nuclei that are fused with the male gamete 
have become the endosperm ovule. So this is the conversion of a ovule into a seed. See, so every seed that you take is just a baby of a plant. Okay, so that is that contains a lot of nourishment for its development or growth, literally, and that's what we feed them. So that includes the the whole seed and the integuments that I was talking about, which will be covering the ovule. Okay, integuments that becomes the seed coat. So every seed is covered by either uh, a yellow color or a brown color, red color, black color structure, like covering, right? That is called seed coat. Those are nothing but just the integuments of the plants. So that is how the seed is formed. Now, in nutshell, what we can, what we can see is after fertilization, the seeds have formed. So there will be a lot of changes that the flower will undergo, which includes the formation of seed from the ovule and the ovule covered by the ovary, right? Ovule is actually covered by the ovary. So the ovary will develop to form the fruit. Okay? Ovary will develop to form the fruit. And the integument which I told you about, which is covering the ovule, will be will become the seed coat of the seed. Okay? And what happens is sepals and calyx, which is the colorful and the non-colorful productive layers or segments, those are actually for decorative purpose to attract, mostly to attract the pollinators. Okay? So now the purpose is already fulfilled by the process of, after the process of pollination. Now it doesn't have any use. It is not going to be converted into any part in this particular type of reproduction. So now what will happen to them? They will just wither off. Usually you will see some fruits will be having uh, their floral parts at the, at the bottom part of the fruit. So they will have not withered off. So some in the in, in you actually flick it up so it falls down. It's easy to see in bananas and then guava and all and then even in pomegranate you can see all these things. So you can just if you just tap it out like it will fall off. So those are the calyx and the corolla of the plants. Okay. So now you have learned about double fertilization and you have learned about uh, how, what is formed into seed and what is formed into fruit and what will happen to the seed. So now the fun part is. What is the purpose of fruit? So if somebody asks you, what is the purpose of fruit? Most of you will be replying, sir, to, to actually provide us nutrition. Then if it is going to provide us nutrition, why is it growing in the fruit? Why is it not produced by ourselves? So the important thing that you need to understand is the seed, the initial growth of the seed, okay, will be, when you, when you have a seed, it actually forms a root, a primitive root-like structure. We call it radical. Okay? Radical. So this radical, this radical will be the primitive root part. So where will this be forming from? This will be forming from the embryo. But where did it get the nutrition to form this from? Because seeds actually germinate upon provision of water. But water alone does the purpose no, it needs nourishment to actually produce new cells. So that will be provided by the seed, endosperm of the seed. So that is how it happens. So now, after this is done, okay, this root will be like, you know, forming certain small roots, lateral roots. So these roots will be absorbing the nutrients. So now, when the seed, which will be usually found in a fruit, when it is not plucked out, but it is not plucked out. So what happens? The fruit gets ripened so much and it falls down and then create and then creates a group. Like it falls and then it forms a slush, slurry like substance. And that is rich with nutrients that is undergoing degradation process. So this degraded process is degradation process after it undergoes degradation process. The materials will be in simpler form, which can be readily used by the growing seedling. Okay, and then become a very healthy plant. So that's the purpose of fruit to be to be precise. It's not for quenching our hunger. Okay, it's not to fulfill our needs. Definitely not. We are we are actually human are very selfish. We are all very selfish. So it's in so many aspects. Okay, uh, you, you can actually check. This is one of the things which I can tell you right now. Okay, so after that you can see all the changes it undergoes. So after fertilization, okay, the seeds are formed and the Withering takes place, the ovary becomes the fruit, and the fruit will be containing the seed, 
and once after the seed uh, is like come off or matured it actually starts to germinate you can see this radical part and again that forms the plant and the plant will become uh, will be growing out big and then it starts to flower and again reproduction so this is a total process of uh, like you know event where which will be see which we can see in the plant so so a plant actually produces seed fruit and then the seed germinates again and then starts to grow back to produce new plants and then from that new plants new flowers will be formed so from those from those new flowers so uh, a new new seeds could be formed again it goes in a cycle okay all around so this is actually the post fertilization event that occurs in the plants so the next topic which we are going to do is uh, sexual reproduction in plants sexual reproduction is like you know one of the most complex thing okay which is which is determined or which is actually present in this scenario to make the organism complex in nature if i'm not wrong because the genetic information which actually makes us the real living organism is will be like you know undergoing uh, like you know uh, a mix and match stuff so let's let's say like it is undergoing a cocktail okay mechanism with because of the involvement of two different individuals from two different genetic uh, traits and uh, differences and stuff like that so then these chromosomal combination actually combine together to form a nucleus of a cell and that cell undergoes several division and form complex tissues it is obvious that the combination of characteristics that that cell contains will be giving out a new individual so just like we saw in the other uh, other other class okay so you you you'll be having siblings and your siblings will uh, uh, have another sibling so all three of you will will have the same parent but all three of you will not look exactly similar it is all because of the combinations that they create okay yes so in the case of male reproductive system we are going to study the structure of male reproductive system and then a little detail about how the things actually happen and stuff okay so now it, we are going to see the parts of the uh, male reproductive system so the first thing is the testis or the testicles so testicles are the primary reproductive organ i repeat it is called primary reproductive organ so why is it called a primary reproductive organ because any structure that is going to produce the gametes which is going to be involved in the process of reproduction we call that primary reproductive organ okay in the case of male it is going to be testicles or testis and in the case of female it is going to be ovary because only from the ovary egg or ovum is produced and only from the testis the sperm is produced so the testicle is actually uh, an oval shaped structure we will see the pictures of it okay so this is a oval shaped structure that's the testis or testicles and then it is actually covered by several layers of membranes to have an enclosure of protection on top of that it had it contains several blood vessels that supports the growth of the tissues okay now so which is what is the function of this testicle the testicles function is to uh, we have mainly two things one is production of sperm and the next one is production of testosterone okay testosterone so now when we talk about testicles testicles are actually not inside the body it is actually outside the body so which means it needs to have a separate protection so that it can be well protected so that function is taken care by scrotum so scrotum over here is a sac like organ why is it called because the testis is held firmly and it is hung outside the body outside the body okay it is present below the penis behind it okay and why does it actually present outside the body because in in female uh, you would have studied that in eighth standard also and uh, you may have not disclosed about this even thing uh, why the testicles are present outside the body and the ovaries are not because the testicles actually require um, a particular optimum temperature to actually perform the two process especially the main process called production of sperm what is the temperature temperature should be anything below the boy temperature 1 to 3 degree below the boy temperature for which the testicles are below the body or outside the body okay. and uh, the next comes vast difference 
So before vas deferens, we have other structures which is also include epididymis. Because the testis, when you see the cross section of the testis, it includes many tubules. So it includes many tubules. So these tubules will actually be uh, containing several structures, several structures. So these structures are called the, uh, like you know, the reproductive center of the gametes, or where the reproductive cells or the gametes are formed. So we'll be seeing that and extensively in the process of. Uh, gametogenesis. We will see that in gametogenesis. So this testis will be containing so many seminiferous tubules. So these seminiferous tubules actually combine together and then they unite to form epididymis. So after epididymis, it goes and forms the vas deferens, which comes out of each testis, which comes out of each testis. You can see this tubule over here, which is actually behind the blood vessel, and which goes behind. So you can see it goes behind. And then unites with the, it's the urethra, the urethra. Urethra is this common tubule through which the male usually reproduce or uh, deposit the male gamete and the process of urination also. So that's why the penis, which actually contains the urethra, is called urinogenital organ. Okay. Now. When this uh, uh, vast difference is actually a tubule which actually delivers the male gamete that is produced in the testis into the reproductive tract or the tract through which the, uh, the gametes could be, uh, like, you know, uh, sent out or deposited in the female process. So the produced stored in the tube called epididymis, as I already mentioned, until the sperms get matured and pass through the urethra through the muscular tube called vast difference. Okay. And there are, there are several axillary glands, so which is going to support the process of uh, reproduction, okay. which includes seminal vesicle, prostrate, and corpus gland. So what are the functions? So you see seminal vesicle, okay. this is prostrate over here, seminal vesicle over here, and then bulbo-urethral gland or corpus gland. Okay. I repeat, it is called Copper's gland because it is the, the person who found it was Copper's gland. So what are the functions of this? So they, they actually produce a viscous material. Okay, seminal vesicle actually produces viscous material uh, with mucus and then uh, prostrate and then uh, they produce al alkaline material. Okay, and then after that, Copper's gland also. So all of them together produces fructose. Okay. And then alkaline medium, it maintains alkyl medium, and then it contains mucus, okay, and then it contains viscous fluid. So all these four properties should be present in the in the semen. The semen is the material that is formed by the combination of these secretions of axillary glands. So these secretions will be combined together, and then the sperms will be going along with the semen. And this is the this is the axillary form. So just like everybody who wants to, let's say a woman actually gets dressed up very, very good. So she will definitely get to accelerate herself. Like she will go for a good particular purse, particular watch, a earring, and then like, you know, coolers, probably a lipstick that goes along with that. So a lot of things. The men also does the same thing. He wears same colored shoes and then, and then a belt if we call the ears, and then a wallet of the same color, and then watch especially he looks into. And then uh, he should be he should be wearing a cap if she if he is wearing an appropriate hat. Like how a person accelerates himself just to make him or like you know present himself. Same way, the seminal vesicle secretion, prostate secretion, copper gland secretions, or the secretions of the axillary glands literally supports the process of the sperm reaching the female reproductive cell. That is the egg. So that is the purpose of axillary gland. So why do they have alkaline material? So the alkaline material will try to neutralize, neutralize the acidic nature of the urine that is passed on to the same pathway or the common pathway called urethra. Okay, that's one thing. And the next thing is the mucus will, will give fluidic nature that will support the movement of the sperm accordingly. Okay, that requires the movement of sperm accordingly. And when the sperm actually moves, it requires energy, right? It requires energy and that energy is provided by the fructose. So I repeat the semen contains 
mucus fructose okay alkaline medium alkaline medium and then viscous nature so these are the main properties of cement so in which the sperms actually mix and then they get ejaculated into the female reproductive part so the last one is the muscular penis so what is function of the muscular penis see excuse me so the muscular penis uh, the function of it is to uh, deliver the uh, the male gamete into the female reproductive tract because uh, the male uh what do you say the secondary reproductive organ because the first thing that you need to know is penis is the secondary reproductive organ reproductive organ so now the function of penis is that it will be complementary to the female reproductive system so that helps you understand that how it helps in the delivery of the male gamete into the female reproductive system okay so there will be a small passage in the female reproductive tract to so the male reproductive secondary reproductive organ will support the okay the distance so that the male male gamete will be delivered in the on the in the, in the open okay in the in the door okay in the main place where it can enter into the female reproductive system literally okay literally so that is the purpose of mus uh, muscular penis see cylindrical tube serves as both reproductive organ and as an excretory organ it delivers sperm into the vagina during sexual intercourse or okay sexual intercourse so this is the function of male reproductive system i hope you have understood clearly about almost everything about the male reproductive system in detail now we will see some interesting questions and which means what are what is pre and post fertilization okay so this question looks very simple but you might get you know confused with this part like you know you should be very clear on what are they what what is this question with this so you should see that do before the process of fertilization there should be something to get fertilized with so that include gamete formation so which is gametogenesis so and after the gametes are formed before fertilization the gametes should meet each other so that includes the transfer of gametes from one place to the place where it can get fertilized so this is pre fertilization and post fertilization is where after the formation of zygote okay they should undergo multiplication of cells and that results in embryogenesis or embryo formation or union of gametes okay so after syngamy has embryogenesis and in the gametogenesis okay is where uh, a diploid cell okay will be dividing into four haploid cells you would have studied this in the process called meiosis this is called reductional division so this kind of division reductional division will provide haploid cell so that one haploid cell from the male okay another haploid cell from the female can be united together that is called fertilization and that would result in two when that's the zygote and this zygote will undergo multiplication to form several stages and that will be staying in the upcoming video okay in the next part and they form multicellular structures like gastrula okay and embryo before that there are several steps i will discuss that in the upcoming video So the next question would be: What are four problems of the main reproductive system? What are the four problems of the main reproductive system? So we'll see the answer. So usually, 
when the male reproductive system is usually at, uh, like you know uh, affected by very 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 limited cases because the male is it's all because of callousness probably so we can say that too. the first one is prostate cancer i don't know how many of you are uh, like you know aware of this no shave november so in the november month they don't shave and they submit or they they donate the the shaving cost that they actually should be availing on the month of november which is four times in the month so they will be donating that particular amount for the for the prostate cancer patients okay that you should understand next one is testicular cancer any cancerous tissue that is actually present in the testicular testicular region that's a okay. and due to some uh, like you know uh, abnormal things it results in enlargement of prostate okay and then prostatitis that is also another disorder these are the four disorders which will be affecting the main reproductive system okay so these are some important questions that we can always know and extra things that we can always learn about okay so okay guys thank you so much for your time i hope you all enjoyed the class and uh, for future things like you know follow us in the next video so don't uh, forget about us like you know we'll definitely meet in the next video and if you have any doubts we are always we are always available online just go to our website and then post your questions and then wait for some time we will definitely get uh, an expert answering that question we have a lot of expert who actually uh, like you know uh, present uh, in a, in a real time to literally answer those or also all those questions so that uh, we could help the future generation uh, to clarify their doubts in much faster way okay? and if you have any queries feel free to call our helpline so we are always there to help okay very happy to uh, learn from you along with you guys and thank you so much